Hello, my name is Peter Merrick, and we're going to be discussing life insurance premium financing as a method to fund estate taxes and for estate planning. What we're going to do is we're going to be talking about what it is. We're also going to be looking at where some of the obstacles have been and the problems and the abuses, and where we can actually apply it for clients who want to protect their estates and at the same time while they're alive they're looking for liquidity. So what I'd like to spend the next few minutes with you to, is to share the value of premium financing and let's start off and look at what is premium financing. It's a worthwhile strategy for an individual, uh, a couple that has a very large estate and they want to use the money that could go for premiums towards other things, maybe their business. They might have a business that's earning 10 to 25 percent and the money that, they're, that they would be spending on, on insurance can be used to actually get greater growth and we're going to be talking about that. What premium financing is, as I shared with you, it's, it's getting a third party lender to actually lend money to purchase uh, life insurance to pay the premiums. And the best way to set it up is to actually set up what's called an irrevocable life insurance trust. And what is that? A revocable life insurance trust is where the life insurance is owned by the trust and the beneficiary is the trust. So the assets are completely irrevocable. They cannot go back to the individual, the grantor who actually placed the, uh, had the insurance placed into the trust. And it's set up properly. It's able to transfer outside the the estate of the individual, so it could provide liquidity, the be, the death benefit, when the individual is no longer with us on this planet. So let's just go quickly and share with you how it actually works. And we've got a graph right here that I'd like to share with you. So let's just give an overview, an overview which would which would include this. You've got a bank premium financing agreement. So you've got a company that's willing to pay and lend money for the premium. The bank lends annually to the, um, the irrevocable life insurance trust. The trust uses the borrow funds to pay premiums on the policy, ensuring the life of the client and the grantor of the, ins the insurance, life insurance uh, trust. The client, the grantor, typically gives money to the trust every year and on death the money would pay out to the trust and the trustee would actually distribute it to where it needs to be. And it's tax-free provided that, that the interest is non-deductible. It's not being deducted. So where were the abuses? The abuses were people were borrowing money who didn't have assets, who were fraudulent, who only intended to buy insurance by financing the premiums to sell it to make a profit. And it, uh, it was very profitable because a lot of the insurance agents who were selling these policies were making a lot of money in commission. And individuals who were able to sell their policies uh, were able to make a sizable profit. They might actually have a premium of $100,000 and they were paying about $4,000 in interest. And they could sell the policy, a $5 million policy, and make $50,000, $60,000 profit. So it was being sold as an investment. I want to share with you that it's insurance. It's not an investment. There are key aspects of insurance which are better than several other types of investments. The, the fact that the money is sheltered tax-free while it's in the policy. But let's go and look at what was happening where abuses were happening. And it's something called the Stranger Originated Life Insurance or a STOLI. And what a STOLI is is it had to do with insurable interest. Insurable interest means that I have an invested interest, let's say, uh, to buy life insurance on my business partner or on my wife or vice versa. But if a stranger was to buy an insurance policy on me, they don't have an insurable interest. I often like using the joke of a, a series that happened called Boardwalk Empire. And what happens is Arnold Rothstein, the individual who fixed the World Series, what he ended up 
doing is he brings in these three brothers and he says, you can work for my family, but first go over there and sign those papers. And they say, what are those papers? Well, those papers happen to be a half a million dollar life insurance policy on each of you. Nothing a bullet in the eye won't fix. If you'll each sign those forms, I'll take it as your acquiescence to our new arrangement. What are they? Life insurance policies. It's a half a million on each year. You'll be handling large amounts of my money, gentlemen. It's my assurance you won't chisel me. At the end of the series, Arnold Rothstein goes and gives those guys up, and they get shot, and he ends up getting a million and a half dollars worth of insurance. Mickey Doyle is worth half a million dollars? Well, not while he's breathing. The Rothmere Insurance Company. One of my subsidiaries. So I gather. So what are you waiting for? Kill him. Well, insurance companies don't like that. So they go through a strict underwriting when they're looking at underwriting and life insurance policies. And I would share with you, no one should do this unless they really have an insurance need and it's a liquidity issue. And what I mean by that is a liquidity issue is I can take the money that I would spend on my premiums and I can make it make more money elsewhere. But if I had to, and if I chose to go that route, I would have no problem paying the premium. So I would share that with you. That is the way that you have to look at premium financing. Everybody knows insurance is a great tool in estate planning, especially with the estate taxes. Premium financing avoids the opportunity cost and paying out of pocket money, using somebody else's money, a third party lender, and getting the full use of your money instead of having it locked up in a policy. It allows the client to obtain a significant amount of life insurance with no out of pocket costs. And again, it's like, where will I make the biggest return on my investment? So who's a good candidate? Someone who has e-liquid assets, who has a net worth over $10 million. A huge opportunity for this. But the people who are going to benefit from this more than anybody else are individuals. Individuals who have a high net worth but want to use their money other than putting it into a policy. And they also care about their offspring.